Hello there, Ray here. We have a brand new snapshot for 1.16. This is 20W12A. In this new snapshot, we got some brand new blocks and the ability to reset our spawn point in the nether dimension. And we get some new ways to farm up the giant fungus. Plus there is a ton of different bug fixes in this version here. Probably the most bug fixes to features I've ever seen in a single snapshot. And remember guys, if you haven't subscribed right, go ahead and do that. As well as remember right after this video, we will be doing a testing of the newest snapshot with the viewers. You can find all the information down below. You guys can hop on as we design new types of farms using these new changes to the game. So make sure you guys are subbed and have your notifications turned on so you don't miss out on that. So let's get into all the crazy changes. They finally added it guys, a way to set your spawn in the nether dimension. Uh, this is by using a new block. It's called a respawn anchor. You need six crying obsidian with three glowstone blocks in the center and that makes you one respawn anchor. Then you go ahead and just place this down onto the ground and you can use glowstone blocks to charge it up. So if I right click this, every time you click it, it's going to be charging up. So there's three charges and four charges. So now there is four charges and every time you die, it's going to deplete one charge. I think it's supposed to be using up the glowstone, but currently it's just charging it without actually using any of the items up. So once you have filled it up, all you do is have to right click it and that will actually set your spawn point. See it says respawn point set. Now you can go ahead and die. And you see, put us back here and used up one of our charges. So now there's only three more. Once there's zero, then you'll be sent back to the world spawn point. Similar if your bed was broken. So you can easily make a respawn anchor just by doing some bartering with a piglin as they will give you the crying obsidian. That's the only way you can get it. And they also give you glowstone dust, which you can use to make it as well as charge it up. They also came out with a new block called polished basalt. So here's the normal one and here's it look like when it's polished. It looks very similar like a petrified tree trunk. And the way you get this is just by putting some basalt into a furnace and smelting it up. And this will make the polished basalt a nice clean look to it. And yeah, you can also rotate it just like logs, you can click on stuff and make it face different directions. And the basalt also has this property. So yeah, definitely a really cool block to be building with. It has nice defined edges, being a little darker, kind of give it that imitation of, of it being round. Now the basalt itself is found here in the soul sand valley and just naturally generates. And you just mine it up and then you can smelt it down. But there is no like crafting recipe for it. We also got some new features to do with anilium, both the crimson and warped variation. And I'll act similar to like grass and you can just right click the top and bone mill it. You get random foliage just like you would in the overworld with grass and flowers. Because people were asking how do you get more like of these crimson roots or how do you get more of the sprouts. So you can get these sprouts as well as both variations of the roots. Every once in a while when you grow it, you get uh, a actual giant fungi to grow on it, which is Pretty crazy. It also broke out a bunch of these other blocks around it. I also noticed it's bone milling kind of like over here. Like over here, it looks like it's trying to bone mill this. Kind of strange. Maybe it's just particle effects. It could also be possible that I just accidentally double clicked and grew one of the mushrooms up. So this is a way you can get more of these fungus. And all this stuff can be pushed off using like pistons. And you can actually get the actual item off of it. So we got a mushroom there. Here's a root, here's another type of root. You do the same thing with the sprouts. So there's a sprout there. If I power this, you see it drops as an item. So this is currently the only way to get more of the fungus, which is needed to grow these giant fungi tree. So you definitely can have a farm that does this automatically by just having a dispenser. So you see if we power it directly into the block, we can get stuff to grow on top. And then once in a while you'll get one of these fungi. And then with another dispenser, you can go ahead and bone all that into a huge fungi. Bone mill it up. There it goes. So yeah, quite large. So it's gonna be a lot of fun to make some fungus trees. So join our snapshot testing stream as we mess around with this as well as much more. They also gave some more effects to the hoe. I just gave myself a netherite hoe with efficiency five. And also gave myself the haste two effect. And now the best tool to actually mine up sponges is the hoe, so both wet as well as dry sponges. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Put down a bunch of sponges. If you place down wet ones in the other, they automatically dry. Let's test this out. I'm going to survival. Oh wow. Yeah, this is like instant mine. That is amazing. 
People have been asking for such a long time a way to easily mine up sponges. So that makes sponges much more useful because it's <laughs> easy to place them down but hard to break them back up and collect them as an item. So I guess one of the few items that you still have to mine very slowly is a beacon. So who knows, maybe that will also get a special tool. You also change it so that the <laughs> piglins can do some new tricks while they're riding a hoglin. So we got one baby hoglin at the bottom and we have looks like three baby piglins on top. That is insane. Oh, <laughs> uh, look at that. Hoglin, baby, 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 baby. <laughs> that is crazy. Let's turn on the hitboxes. That is pretty darn amazing. So they are definitely acrobats. It looks like all these other ones want to take part in it as well. That, uh, that's, I guess, that's one way to kind of scare your enemy by staying on top of each other. And these guys don't go through uh, nether portals or end portals when they're stacked up like this. And if the piglins are running a hoglin and you try to take the information from the hoglin, you can't actually summon one of these guys in. Uh, I tried it last time too. Last time I just summoned in a normal hoglin, but now you can see when it summons these guys in, they're all kind of already fell off of him. Sometimes I don't summon them in, it's kind of strange. I don't know if there only could be like one of these guys at a time. So they made some changes to the new nether gold ore. It can actually be mined up using any type of pickaxe. And it will now drop some gold ingots. Let's go ahead and pick them up. We've got three from that one. So you can use whatever tool you want. I got four from that one. We've got six there. So it's a bit random. So it seems like if you use a lower tier pickaxe, you just get less of them. And if you use a higher tier pickaxe, you get more. Now you can still put them into a furnace and uh, smelt them up. And you will still get one gold ingot. So it kind of depends if you want to take the time to smelt it or if you just want to mine it and hope you get quite a few of them. So it seems like the most I get is six. So it seems like you never get enough to actually equal an ingot, so it's better to smelt them up. They made a big change to fishing. They now have it so that if you are fishing and trying to get a treasure loot, you will have to go to open waters in order to actually get that. This probably means that you can't get treasure loot from AFK fish farms because it's kind of like a confined spot. This means we'll have to kind of redesign AFK fish farms to make it think that we're actually in open water in order to continue to get those treasure enchantments. It should be a lot of fun designing up a fish farm for that. Make sure you guys join the stream as we figure all these things out. And with this, they also made some changes to do with the, how the fishing hook kind of checks the area around it. So now it actually checks for properties of the fishing hook. This includes a parameter called in open water, which matches whether the location is in open water fishing or not. An efficient location is considered to be open water if there is no block above the water and no solid underwater block around. All water blocks are sourced blocks and there are no bubble columns. And this means you have to have a little bit bigger area in order to get the treasure enchantments. Made two changes to parrots. They will now imitate hostile mobs less likely and they will also not randomly imitate hostile mobs when the game is on peaceful. They also changed the way the game detects if you should be played some cave sounds. So hopefully it's more appropriate and not playing them when you're like inside of a shop up above. Now with the new changes to having a respawn anchor, they also made it so that the command for setting spawn point can now be chosen for dimension. So I can do set spawn point in the overworld. I can also go over into the nether dimension and do set spawn point. I should probably set it right here. And let's see if it works. You can see it's saying Overall, now it's saying nether, and we'll just do move a little ways away, do slash kill, and let's see. Okay, so it sets me here. So it looks like they still have to work out the whole respawning in the other dimension part, but the commands are there. They also made some changes to the UUIDs, which are the unique digits that represent every player as well as mob. And they kind of renamed them and restructured them. So that there is an owner UUID, which goes to stuff like tame animals, area effect clouds, as well as evoker fangs and projectiles. All stuff to do with the player. There's also one called trusted UUID, which goes to like foxes and them trusting a player. Which is different because the fox isn't like actually your pet, it just trusts you. They also got a target UUID, which is for conduits, and it's for them to target different type of entities. They fix a dismounted bug. When a player would dismount, he'd be placed half a block too high and he would kind of fall downwards. There was a problem with the silent tag not working, which would make it so that mobs don't make any noises. And they went ahead and fixed that. 
there are some non-ticking blocks that are marked as ticking, forcing the growth algorithm to check chunks needlessly. Stuff like redstone ore, uh, the new soul fire block, and campfires were actually doing these ticks, so this allows it to be more optimized. So a quite old bug has finally been fixed in the game. This is something kind of known as zero ticking. It was first discovered by Toes Redstone, who found out it's possible to put blocks underneath the different types of vegetation and crops and make it instantly grow. And I even expanded upon his simple design to make it essentially work for almost every single type of crop. And I've shown these a lot in past videos. And just in the last snapshot, I showed how you can actually use this trick to grow up the twisting vines. But now you can see they have fixed it. So now it's no longer possible to easily farm up tons of different types of crops like sugarcane, which is a lot of times used to make bone meal or trading with villagers or stuff like bamboo. You can easily grow it up to make a fuel source. So if you guys want to take advantage of this before you update your world to 1.16, Make sure to do that because it will be fixed from now on. A lot of people use this, but in the end, it is a bug and they are attempting to try to fix bugs like this. So if you want to store up on a lot of different types of these materials before you update or do a lot of trading with villagers or anything like that, keep that in mind before you update your server. If you want to see other types of farms that you could do with this, I'll link down in the description to a video that covers those. And this glitch here has been in the game for four years now. They fix a bug that I have been promoting for quite a long time, which is the recipe side over here. After a death, you come back here to click into it, it'd be automatically closed again. This may seem like a small thing, but if you play a lot of survival, over time you notice this and it becomes a whole bunch of redundant clicking you have to do because every time it's closed, it's open it. There's also a problem that this is always set to show all and always forgets when the player leaves it on this page which is something I hope that they fix in the future as well. And I actually sent an entire list like this to the developers of little annoying things that I run across day to day while playing Minecraft. So people report a bug that water wasn't killing off uh, grass. And this is something I thought was always intended, but you can just see it killed off that one. Before it used to be pretty much staircase as deep as you want and it wouldn't kill off the grass. So it seems like this grass will still stay alive. I wonder if we have some light sources down here. Can we also make these other ones stay alive? Nope, seems like it still died. So I guess if your grass is too deep underneath water, then it will die. Something like this well, it seems like it still stays alive. They fix a really old bug, which is mobs prefer to pathfind in the negative Z direction, which is in the north direction. And if you have a bunch of mobs in a big pin, they'll all end up in that corner. There's a bug if you were like standing on a snow layer, you could kind of see into the ground and they fix that positioning bug. They fix a similar problem to do with player positioning, but instead of snow layers, it was with soul sand. They had to fix a bug to do with clicking on a bed in the daytime doesn't grant advancement sweet dreams. And I don't know, I'm clicking on it. It don't seem like it gives me the advancement either. I wouldn't think it would because you have to typically sleep in order to get that. Let's try it at night. Yeah, now I get it. Makes sense. They fix an the item duplication bug to do with llamas or mules or donkeys. This bug has been in the game for almost three years and they are trying to fix a lot of item duplication glitches that have been around in the game for a long period. When bees were pollinating different plants, it wasn't showing the animation for that and they went ahead and fixed that one. There's also a problem with the bees getting stuck wandering in the northwest after completing a task or randomly wandering and they change it so now bees have a maximum distance they'll wander away from their hive which is 22 blocks. That way your bees won't get too lost. They fix a bug to do with sometimes your potion effects looking like they stop exactly at zero. Uh, timer it has to do with using multiple levels of the same effect that were being applied in decreasing order. They fix the problems to do with villager generating structures. It's only blocks being in the wrong spot. They also fix a bug to do with this menu closing when you would relog. The one inside of the blast furnace. They fix the problem that the netherite ingot recipes weren't grouped together. Breeding two hoglings is now a requirement in order to get the 2x2 two two advancement where you have to breed up two of every type of animal. They remove the bug to do with the netherite being smelted up, not giving the proper amount of XPs. They remove the bug to do with piglins when they would come over here to the overworld, they can convert into a adult zombified pigman riding a chicken, which would have been a pretty cool mob to collect up in a zoo. So you want to get it, you have to get it during these snapshots. Similar to like the adult drown riding the chicken that I showed. There is this weird glitch that Johnny showed me where fossils can actually generate way up here at the top of the bedrock and break through the bedrock and that has now been removed. 
The change away that passengers riding an entity get dismounted from the entity if it dies. So now for most things like jockeys, the top one should drop directly into the center instead of being placed off to the side. And the dismount was also changed for like boats so that the player isn't placed into a dangerous spot when he dismounts. If you happen to fall to death while you came out of a water source, there is now a new death message which will say that you fell out of water before hitting the ground. Where's the problem with the fossils, generation was getting cut off by chunk borders that they have now addressed. Breaking fire with some tools was damaging the tool's durability and they removed that bug. Fire rockets that were shot from a crossbow weren't exploding upon impact and now they do that. They fixed that problem to do with flaming arrows when they would ignite a TNT the actual arrow would get stuck in an infinite loop, just constantly falling after the TNT exploded. Something I showed in the last snapshot. Item frames will now take void damage. Now you can break off chorus flowers by shooting them, but it's also interrupting the arrow as well as trident's velocity. If I go ahead and shoot this, the arrow continues going downwards. There was a problem that the soul speed boots were decreasing durability while even using them in creative. I also noticed that if you're in spectator mode, they would also give the particle effects if you walk over top of soul sand or soul soil. Looks like they fixed that. You can now make soul fire by also placing fire onto soul sand, not just soul soil. They made it so that piglins are now also attracted to the new nether gold ore, just like they're attracted to other gold stuff. They fixed it so that the shroom light tool is only the hoe and they removed it so you can't use an axe on it anymore. They fixed that crazy bug that we discovered to do with soul speed 3 and having it in water would actually increase the player's momentum. That was a pretty fun glitch to play around with, but it made sense that they would have to fix it. Very potential that it could have been crashing surface with it. They also have it so that soul speed can actually break the boots if it gets too low when taking durability. Now the soul speed books that are given to the player when bartering with the piglin were not actually able to be put into an anvil and used on boots and they fixed that. They also removed it so you can no longer find these type of books inside of chests. So you have to do bartering in order to get these guys. Can't get them from like mobs either or enchanting table, anything like that. They fixed it so that axes are now the appropriate tool to use on the new types of signs. So some pretty big changes to do with new added features, being able to go into nether and actually set your spawn point. They also did a ton of different bug fixes, including some pretty major ones that have been in the game for a long time, zero tick farms. So it means we'll have to go back to doing the old type of farming and I have shown some old style farms for all the different things like bamboo, crops, kelp and all that sort of stuff. So those are the farms you want to build up in 1.16 and above. And in this snapshot they did a lot of bug fixes which is always good to see. Let me know what you guys think about these changes and make sure to share this video with other Minecrafters so they know about all the changes which are coming out. And don't forget right after this stream we are doing a snapshot testing with a viewer live stream so you guys can hop on to our test server here and see if we can make some new types of farms and contraptions using these changes. You can find all the information for that down below. So make sure you have your notifications turned on as well as follow me on my other social media. I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the stream. Bye bye!